YouTube and welcome to another episode of Sex Science with Susie. Today we're going to talk about heart attacks and frequency of sexual intercourse. So basically how much sex you have, if that influences how likely you are to have a heart attack. Because as I do research for my videos, I ran across this little blurb. The gist of the little blurb was that the more you have sex, the smaller your chances are of a fatal heart attack. That sounds interesting. So I went looking into the article, the actual scientific article. And surprise, surprise, it's not actually that simple. First of all, this little blurb that I found was from 2016, so fairly recent. It mentioned quite a few surprising facts about sex, and this was one of them. Then the actual scientific article is from 2002. So that's, especially now, a pretty long ago, that's 16 years ago. But you know, it, that doesn't have to mean it's not true. So let's look in detail what the actual study did. What they did was asked a random sample of middle-aged men in a certain town in England to take part in a scientific study. And of that random sample, a little over 2000 actually participated. As part of the total questionnaire, they asked how often they had sex ranging from never to every day. Quite a few people refused to answer this question and they dropped this question as the study progressed because they were afraid more people would drop out because of this question. Mind you, it's a longitudinal study. So this is from quite a while ago. They asked these people around 1980. So I can imagine that there might have been a few people around then that were uncomfortable answering this question. So we had 2000 something participants, only about a thousand roughly actually answered this question about sex. That's the, the whole setting. They asked a whole bunch more questions and they also asked a lot about general health questions and got medical records and did a thorough health test for every single person that took part. It was part of a much larger study. But they, they're focusing right now on this one question. And then 10 years later and 20 years later, they checked how these people were doing and if they had medical problems, specifically if they had a stroke in the meantime, or if they had a heart attack and also related problems. So if they had, for example, heart disease, what they found is that after 10 years, there is a significant relationship between how often you had sex and if you've had a fatal heart attack. After 20 years, that is no longer there and there is no relationship between how often you had sex and if you had a stroke in these 10 years or these 20 years. The relationship that was there that I just said was after 10 years, the people who reported having more sex, uh, about two times a week or more, had less chance of a fatal heart attack in those 10 years than the people who had sex once a month or less. And like I said, after 20 years, that effect was no longer there. That is a little different, I would say, than what this article said. So the comments that I have on this scientific article and on this little blurb is they suggest that they somehow measured how often they had sex over time and that this then decreased the chances of having a heart attack. But that wasn't true. There was no measurement of sexual activity after 1980. 
we don't know what these people did in those 10 years. Maybe they started having more sex. Maybe they started having less sex. We don't know. It's only this relationship between how often you had sex when you were middle-aged and your chances then of having a heart attack later within the next 10 years. That sounds very different than what these people reported. Regardless of what they reported, I would have also liked to have known what happened in the meantime. But I can understand that this is not something you're gonna keep asking. Especially since they ditched the whole question in the first place. But it would have been nice if we had like a yearly report on, okay, how much sex are you having now? And then you could see decrease or increase affect heart attack rate. Then you'd have something that is a little more substantial. Second problem I have with the scientific article itself is it's just self-report. There was no measurement. People had to answer this question about if they did have sex or not and how often. Now, they say that this is fairly reliable and people answer honestly on this kind of thing. I'm not so sure that's true. My third point related to the second point, what was the actual question that they asked? If the question was how often do you have sex with your partner, because they only asked the married men, if they actually asked only how often do you have sex with your partner, that's an entirely different question than how often do you have sex. Especially also because not everybody has a committed relationship. Sure, maybe they were married, but maybe they were also in another kind of relationship. I don't know. And my fourth comment, which is maybe more important, Aren't we really testing something else here? It might be about sex, but they mention confounding variables in their discussion. That means basically what else could be going on behind the scenes that could be explaining this effect. I think I have another confounding variable that they didn't discuss for some reason. Relationship health. There is going to be some kind of relationship here between how often people have sex and the health of their relationship. And that affects your well-being and your physical health in an astounding way, I would imagine. Given my own experience here, I would say there's probably a lot more going on than just not having sex. This article seems to be mostly focusing on the physical effects. The physical effects of having a lot of sex. How would that explain the health of your heart? But I'm talking about emotional health. I'm talking about health of the relationship. And that is going to affect you 10 years later at least as much, I would say, as physical health. Usually, if they don't have sex anymore, they're also not affectionate in other ways like hugs and kisses and touch, massages, all that kind of thing is also not happening. Maybe it's not about the sex, maybe it's about the affection that you have with your partner. I would say there's definitely a lot of factors there that we don't know about that might be affecting this heart attack rate 10 years later. What if you get divorced and you get a new partner and you're all in love and you're happy again and you start to having lots of sex again? Maybe that is great for you. But they didn't measure any of that stuff, so we don't know. And of course, somebody in 2002 writing up this article from all this data they gathered from years ago, they can't do anything about the kinds of questions that they asked in 1980. So. I understand that they had to just see what was there based on the material that they had. And this is still interesting. I would love to see the actual effects. If we know all these factors, emotional health, relationship health, uh, maybe monitor people over an extended time, not just once here and once there, but just if, you know every year see how your relationship is doing and how that is affecting your health. 
I think that would be fascinating. And then while we're at it, why not include what kind of sex are you having? Is the sex that you're having satisfying to you? Why not include people who are not just in a marriage, but living kind of alternative lifestyles because they are not relying on just one partner to, to fulfill their sexual needs. So maybe those are super healthy then, but maybe not. I would love if we had more information here. We obviously don't, but I think we can't just conclude this simple blurb of having lots of sex means you're going to have less chance of a heart attack. We don't really know that based on this study. This is going to happen a lot. <laughs> if you look at all these popular media and kind of sensationalist blurbs that they make and titles that they make, and then you look at the actual data, usually what they said doesn't really match what's in the data. So this might happen a lot when we cover this kind of scientific article. I think it's cool to help you get a bit of insight into what's really behind this kind of sexy blurb and to have some fun with finding out what people study, what kind of things people study. So that's my main goal with this series. And of course, to find out some cool things about sex. All right, that does it for this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.